Hey church, welcome today. It is so great to have you joining us online. We are gonna have such an amazing service today. Yeah, there's a QR code on the screen right now. And if you would love to reach out to us, we would absolutely love to connect with you. So why don't you scan that, reach out, and one of our team would love to get in contact with you this week. Maybe you wanna come along to a service or join one of our life groups, scan the code and we can get in touch with you. Absolutely, but before we do that, let's pray and really ask God to do something in and through us today as we, as we hear what God's got to say. So Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that your word is alive and it's powerful. We pray that you would speak to everyone watching this today in Jesus' name, amen. 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 This holy desire is burning and it just gets brighter. Can't put out this fire. I've just got to lift you higher. If there's ever been a time, the time is now. Right now, if there's ever been a name to sing out loud, out loud, oh, Jesus, you deserve it. Oh, you are worth it. All of my passion, oh, all of my passion, Jesus can't contain. I bow down before you, 
surrendering my life again in the middle in the middle of the madness I know that you to my father is tender whisper welcoming I'm gonna rest here in your presence there's no place I'd rather be there's no place I'd rather be there's no place I'd rather fasting we've been praying solid for two weeks we've got a week to go um and you know what my prayer is that this shifts something in our life it's not just like an event but it's like a step towards jesus and a revelation of my prayer and fasting my my big i've got lots and lots of things i'm 
believe in God for. And we should always, when they're saying you believe in God for something, you should have your hands up. If you haven't got anything to believe for, then you need to start saying, God, what should I be believing for? And, uh, but my prayer for me is that just closer, I just want to be closer to Jesus. I want Jesus to really be working in how I think and just in, in the inner, you know, the inside me, not just so much the outside me. I've got lots of things out there I'd like him to fix. Lord, fix this, fix her, fix that, fix this. But uh, Jesus has actually said, actually, I'd like to fix you. Oh, and um, that, that's my prayer. You know, Jesus, search me, oh God, know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. That's my prayer. And um, that, that's our prayer for our, I want more of Jesus in our church. You know, if you want to just get a, unlock the code, the, the last few years we did the one, that's Jesus. The next one was the Holy Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. This one's the Word. So the, the theme of the last three years is just for us to connect with God. That's the deal. And um, that is my prayer. So I want to talk to you today about hanging with Jesus. Jesus in, um, we've been reading the book of John. And in John 15, Jesus gives this amazing teaching. I find Jesus' teaching very confronting and very inspiring. I, I just love the person of Jesus. I love the drama of the Gospels. I put myself in the movie. I'm watching him do this stuff. I love how he was just unintimidated. You know, he's, he's tougher than Jack Reacher, Jesus. And uh, <laughs> they come and they try to get, scare him and he's just like, here it is. I love it. And Jesus says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. This is in Luke 15. Those who remain in me, or the new King James says, abide in me, which I love because that's where you live. right? Those who are, remain in me or abide in me or live in me, I and them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, will ask what you will ask for anything you want and it will be granted and then you will produce much fruit for you are my vine you are my true disciples and this brings great joy to my father I have loved you even as the father has loved me does that astonish you so we think of this love in the Godhead you know the Godhead Father Son Holy Spirit three persons one God all very hard to get your head around but this like unity of love well he's saying as much as the father loves me I love you that's astonishing because I'm really aware that perhaps I'm not as good as Jesus and yet he still loves me in all my ambiguity, in all my challenges, he loves me. Anyway, that's just a, that's for free. Um, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. And just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that you'll be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. Jesus is calling us to remain, to abide, to live in him. I love the image of Jesus being the vine and us being the branches because the vine includes the branches. So we can't be connected to Jesus without being bumping up against some other branches. So we're all together. So, you know, the Apostle Paul describes us as the body of Christ, which I think is really good. So when we go into work, we don't, don't get all messianic, but when you go to work, you are, you're presencing Jesus in your workplace, in your family, with your mates. My big prayer when I'm with my mates who don't know Jesus is how can I presence you here? And what I'm incredibly aware of is once they know that I'm following Jesus, everything I do, even if it's just throwaway nonsense, is evangelism. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You know, the joke the coffee you bought, the coffee you didn't buy, it's everything is, is, it's evangelism. Like once you're on display, you know we're talking about Alpha. Alpha's been so good for us. I'm looking around the room and there's all these Alpharites that have come out of Alpha and are serving God on our team. I just saw one and he gave me a little bit of a smile. I went, oh, there he is over there. He was keeping our kids in line, which I think he does so well. But they came out of Alpha. And so be inviting your mates. Here's the thing. Once your mates know you're a Christian, you're already weird. So just go with it. And uh, just say, look, why don't you come with me? Put the with me in there. Go with them. Don't send them. Go with them. But what can go wrong? They can just say, nah, not so much. And then you can go, all good. And, uh, but let's be inviting because we're presencing Jesus. We're presencing Jesus. So we want Jesus first. This whole thing, Jesus says, abide in me. 
and let my words abide in you. Live in me. Jesus wants us connected to him. In fact, he's our life source. There's no life, because apart from me, you can do nothing. So remaining or abiding is Jesus first. How do I remain in Jesus? How do I abide in Jesus? Does anyone remember, um, and this will be oldies because everyone's got past this now, when suntans were cool? Just give me a thing. Everyone used to go to the beach and get suntan. We even had suntan stuff that made you burn quicker. So you'd douse yourself, douse yourself in coconut oil so you could burn faster, which is just fantastic, you know. And, and we didn't live near the beach, but we always wished we did. So when we got a chance to go to the beach, we had to make up for lost time. Anyone with me? And uh, you'd get there and you think, oh, I'm going to get a suntan today. You don't get a suntan today. You get burnt today. All right? Sam Rawara, you have no clue what I'm talking about. That's his genetic advantage. But uh, oh, we used to, I remember my parents used to drop us kids at the pool in the morning and pick us up in the evening. We'd come home so sunburned that we couldn't sleep under the sheet. We were just bad. We were done, right? And uh, that's not abiding. That's an uh, encounter. <laughs> God hasn't just called us to encounter him. He's called us to abide with him. I, um, I've got a little gym at home. And just because of moving and all sorts of stuff, it had been in pieces. I put it back together, got it back in there, did what I normally do. And I could do it, except that and my back got sore because I strained my back because I hadn't been abiding. Fitness and suntans have this thing in common. You don't get them by an event. You get them by abiding. You know, I'm going to do a marathon tomorrow, so I'm going to stay up all night practicing. That's not going to help. All right? God's called us to abide in him. Live in him. He's our life source. You ever knocked a branch on a, on, a, on a plant in the garden? Any small boy kicking a football knows this truth. You put the branch back in place, no one knows for a day or two. And then all of a sudden, one of these branches is not like the others. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about here. He's called us to stay connected because the life source comes from Jesus. And the fruitfulness comes from Jesus. So what we need to do, abiding is a habit. Uh, a, a great prophet of, to the nations, David Brock, said to me, if you want to change your life, what you have to do is change your life. Whoa. What we need is some new habits. We need to change some things. You know, Jesus talked about the private habit of prayer. Matthew 6, he says, when you pray, don't pray in the street corners. Now, there's less of that these days. Back then, it was pretty popular and cool. These days, less people are standing in the middle of Queen Street going, praying. It's not happening so much. But he's saying, look, don't be doing... Well, tonight we're coming here to pray and worship. And we're coming here to encounter God. But that shouldn't be all of it. This morning, I love church. You get Jesus, worship, coffee. It's fantastic. And you get people, great people as well. And the coffee helps you deal with the people. <laughs> but, I'll, I'll, but this can't be all there is. I just, I, I just don't come from a little God spot and then carry on. He's called me to abide. I don't just plug in. It's not like a recharge point for your Tesla. It's like we're called to abide, stay connected. And he talks about this. When you pray, go in a room, shut the door, and don't babble on. Don't use big words. Just talk to your heavenly Father, and your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you openly. We need to have a, a, a connection, a God connection habit. That's what abiding looks like. It's connecting with God. And, not, and it's not even just that little bit in the middle of the, mo in the morning. I used to feel so guilty growing up because I'd miss my devotions in the morning like every day. And so then I thought, oh, I can't pray for you in the day because, you know, it would make me hypocritical. And God's going, Jeff, you're not that special anyway. Just have a chat. But that personal habit, we need some personal habits of spending some time in his word. You know, I know when I talk to God, but when I'm reading the Bible, he's talking to me. And I find it incredibly confronting often, which is awesome. So we need personal habits of abiding. Regular time with Jesus keeps me alive. Anyone who does not remain with me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. See, the thing is, God doesn't disconnect us from the vine. We disconnect ourselves from the vine and then we die then once we're dead, we're no good. So we're not good for the bind. But we can, if we stay plugged in, then his life flows into us. 
regular time with Jesus unlocks my vision and purpose. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain or abide in me and I in them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing. Or Romans 12, Paul says it this way. Don't copy the customs and behaviors of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know what God's will for you, which is good, pleasing and perfect. You know, we obsess a lot about God's will for our lives and we should, but we typically we're thinking about what we should be doing. You know, oh, Lord, what's your will for my life? What can I do? Jesus is thinking, my will for your life is for you to be like me. So Jesus is actually much more concerned about who we are than where we are or what we're doing. And, and the thing is, God can shift you and open up a door for you to do something in a second, but he has a lot of trouble changing us. <laughs> so it takes time. You think, why is God? Because, it's, because you're not cooperating. And, and we just need to abide. Oh, let God change you into a new person. By what? Changing the way you think. Then once your thinking starts to shift, God will unlock his will for your life. And I'm going to tell you, his will for your life is a much more about who you are than what you're doing. God abiding unlocks my vision, or God's vision and purpose for me. Regular time with Jesus unlocks his supernatural. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, we'll ask what anything you want and it will be granted. Here's the thing with the supernatural. We're not so much believing for something, and we are believing for something, but more fundamental than that, we're believing in someone. So it's not just we're believing for something, because sometimes I don't see the whole picture. And God's working And I don't understand all that. And some of it, I'm just going to check up when I get to heaven, but it may not be as important. (laughs) But yes, we're believing for something. We're believing. And more of Jesus, we get more of his power, more of his presence. But we want really for more of him. Because this thing that we're doing here is very temporary. This thing that we'll do on the other side of here is very, very eternal. And I want more of him. God's working in my life. God's working in your life. As we're going through this journey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, he's with me. He's with you in every season. Why? Because he's changing who we are. But if we're abiding in Jesus, it's the first thing. It's not the only thing. It's Jesus first, but it's not Jesus only. And we need to understand that God's called us to do this in community. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you'll be filled with joy and then your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. Now, when Jesus, we talk about God's command, well, Adultery is still out. Murder is not good. Okay, that hasn't shifted. But Jesus has been more specific there. He's talking about loving one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another. God's called us to community and he's called us to abide in him as a gang. We don't just do it. We have it. Remember we talked about private prayer? Absolutely. But we're here as a community of faith. Community, you know, abiding requires obedience. I was just listening to... Um, Bible project this morning, and they were talking about Shema, which is that word, you know, hero God, hero Israel, the Lord your God is one God, that word, word here. And it really means hear and obey. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to hear and to obey. We're called to listen. You know, you know yourself when you're saying to your kids, why don't you listen to me? Or didn't you listen to me? What they're saying is, if you had listened, you wouldn't have done that. And, and that's what God said. He says, I want to. I, You've got to obey my commandments. You've got to do what I say. And, what, and his number one commandment, in fact, in, in John 13, Jesus says, look, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. He said that lots of times. Um, and he says, this is how the world will know that you're my disciples, because of our love for one another. No, the world can't measure your love for God, or if they can, they measure it in our love for one another. So it's in abiding. It's in together. That God works on our life. You know, I've heard people say, Can, you know, do you need to go to church to be a Christian? I reckon that's God's idea of church and Christians. He didn't call us to be little, you know, isolated Christians. You know, you can feel very spiritual by yourself. 
because there's no problems. Because all the problems come from other people, right? And, and what I've actually found is that Christians that don't connect in the community, they become weird Christians. And they say weird things, like strange. I think, oh, that's odd. I remember someone talking to me, it was early, early days in the college, and I was saying, oh, we don't go to church because there's too much unrighteousness in the church. I thought, oh, how good are you? And uh, I wasn't impressed with that because well, here's the thing, right? So, oh, I'm just, I'm just seeking God by myself. Okay, you witness to the fellow in the bus, then what? It's like you're a midwife without a family. You just deliver babies and what do you do? And so we, we, we need to... We're on a mission, church, and we're doing that together. And, you know, Paul talked about how we minister to one another and together we minister to the world. We are a team. And um, God's called us together to make a difference. His commandment is that we love one another just as he's loved us. Wow. Jesus was often asked about the greatest commandment. So often people are trying to check if Jesus was really even orthodox. And so these religious leaders that come up to Jesus say, what's the greatest commandment? Of course, Jesus always nailed that. And occasionally he asked them that. And, uh, and so this guy comes, teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? This is uh, an event in Matthew 22. And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. You must abide in me. That's the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. We love God and we love each other. Our love is expressed in community. Our love for God is expressed in community. That's really confronting. Because community is sometimes less than ideal, right? Um, why is community so key to abiding? Why is community so key for me remaining in him? Well, because community gives me the opportunity to live like Jesus. See, the gardener uses community to prune his branches. You just have to be around someone for a while and you find that these branches have got some thorns on them and they're just a little bit annoying. Um, you know, community, like marriage, is hard work because it's really close community. Um, parents found in COVID that their kids were hard work. This community wouldn't go to school. You know, they come home here and they're just with them all the time. You come to church, you join a team and you've got, you know, Julie or Betty or Bill or Bob and you think, oh, I don't want to be on team with Bob. And um, I, if your name's Bob, I don't even know. So, <laughs> but it... it See, relationships reveal my weaknesses and they also express my strengths. That's where I express my strengths. But God uses relationships. I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does, bear, does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. He does that in community. See, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of those attributes that are the fruit of the Spirit are expressed in community. Although I do get the opportunity to be long-suffering with myself. You know, when you, where did I put that thing? I hear myself say, oh, it's lost forever. And I thought, and my little voice says, Jeff, you've said that lots and lots of times. And it's come back and I ask my wife to panic with me and she never does. Never does. But love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, they're community attributes. Jesus is using your relationships to, to shape you to be more like him. That's why church is so awesome, because you've got imperfect people on the journey just like you. And just like he's using them to shape you, guess what he's using you for? To shape them. Forgiveness is only possible in relationship. I can't forgive someone I don't know. I, I, if you forgive those who sin against you, this is Jesus, this is the boss, right? And he said this a couple of times, so it wasn't a mistake. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Jesus said that a couple of times. Whoa. See, forgiveness is only possible in relationships, in the context of relationship. If I've got nothing to forgive, so, you know, while I'm out there on a pole meditating on Jesus, I don't have to forgive anybody. But when I'm in community, I become like Jesus because I get to forgive. 
And that's essential for your marriage, for your parenting, for your mates. It's just, we just need to be good at forgiving. Sacrifice is only possible in relationships. This is my commandment. Love each other the way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for my friends. You know, in Romans 12, Paul talks about in honour, preferring one another. Or It's like we put others before ourselves. I love that. That makes us like Jesus. Jesus said, look, if you want to be great, you've got to be the greatest servant. Even the Son of Man, even me, didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we're called to serve. You can only serve in relationship. The message is clear. We are to abide in Jesus because it's from Jesus that we get our life source. It's from Jesus that we have life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. As we abide in him, we receive that love. But we can't abide in Jesus alone. We're called to abide in Jesus together. Jesus didn't come to create a whole bunch of individual Christians. He came to build his church. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is something incredibly, profoundly powerful about the church. The church is bigger than life church. There's lots of gatherings of the church. The church is the army of God that's following Jesus. Got a mate here, Jeff Bray. He goes to a great church in Chinchilla with Lee and Carly Dolman, and they're just awesome. And uh, so it's not like this building. It's not the building. It's we are the people of God. And God is using his people. He has positioned us in this generation to steward this generation and this generation of mission. If we drop the ball, then we can be the broken link in the chain. We, you know, people say, oh, I don't know if Jesus is coming back. This I don't care where Jesus is coming back in this generation. I've got to tell you. He's going to be a bit quicker than he's been to beat me there. I reckon I'll get to Jesus before he'll get here, just quietly. That's my prediction. If he comes and I'm wrong, what are you going to do? But uh, this is the last generation we've got. This is the last generation we've got. We're not going to get another show at this. Jesus came to establish a life-giving community of faith. So we're to put Jesus first by loving and serving one another. You know, this all starts with a relationship. I love it that Jesus is interested in relationship. Does that astonish you that God wants a relationship with us? Because God's all perfect and all amazing, and we are not, right? Really, really, we're not. And, and we look really shabby when we try to pretend we are, but we're really not. You know, there's no way you could get to God. You know, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. In another place, it says, this is how much God loved the world, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's in Romans. Jesus showed how much he loved us by dying for us. Why did he have to die for us? He died for us to do what we could never do for ourselves. Jesus came looking for us in our averageness so that we could be connected with his perfection. He doesn't just pick perfect people. He picks broken people because that's all there is. <laughs> We're all a bit busted. Isn't that wonderful that Jesus wanted a relationship? with God put skin on. That's astonishing. He didn't send an email. He didn't put it up on social media. He didn't. Do, he came, put skin on, and dwelt amongst us. John says well, he put skin on, dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory. Jesus came for a relationship. He didn't come so you could encounter God. He came so we could walk together through the highs and the lows, the green pastures. You know, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Psalm twenty-three. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, still Psalm twenty-three. He prepares a table for oh, He's with me as I walk through the valley of shadow of death. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. It's not always good, but he's always there. And he wants a relationship with you. And today, if you want to connect with Jesus, this is the time. This is the opportunity to establish a personal relationship with Jesus. It's astonishing that I have the opportunity to do that. I mean, there's a lot of famous people who are never going to take my phone call, but God does. That's amazing. Jesus loves you. You know, there's nothing you can do to make him love you more because he loves you to bits. There's no, pos there's no, he just loves you. But we need to receive his love and we need to carry his love. And so I'd like us just to close our eyes. And this just gives us a God moment with our certain, you know, just to connect with God. If your prayer today is that you want to connect with Jesus, you want to plug into the vine, you want his life flowing through you, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. I want you to stick your hand up nice and high so I know who I'm praying for this morning. Just give me a wave. Put your hand up high and say, yeah, I see that hand. I see that hand. That's fantastic. I see that hand. Good on you. Awesome. 
Who else this morning is saying, yeah, that's me. I'm saying yes to Jesus. I want to connect my life to Jesus this morning. Just give me a wave because I'm going to pray for you. I can see your hands down the back there. Awesome. I'm praying for God to do a miracle in your situation as you plug your life into that vine, into that life-giving power source, into that relation, personal relationship with Jesus. Just give me a wave. Yeah, I see your hand there. That's tremendous. Who else this morning? Saying, yeah, I'm saying yes to Jesus. I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. Awesome. Why don't we stand together, church? What a great holy moment this is as we surrender our lives to him. And I want us all to pray and pray with some gusto, you know, with some fufa, because we are enthusiastically responding to Jesus, each one of us. And, you know, it doesn't, if your relationship with God's brilliant, pray this prayer with loud conviction. If you're just connecting, reconnecting with Jesus or connecting for the first time, pray this with some conviction. Let's pray together, church. Dear Lord Jesus, this is my decision to surrender my life to you. Today, Lord Jesus, I choose to abide in you. Today, Lord Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your life. I receive your healing. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. I choose to live my life in relationship with you and this lot here. Amen. Come on. Hey, um, you prayed that prayer for the first time. Yeah, that was a significant prayer for you. We'd love to catch up with you at the Next Steps table. Um, there is a lounge there, but it's now diversified. And we've got Next Steps, Steps lounge and tables. And, uh, but we'd love to give you a Bible. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to pray with you. That would be our greatest honour. Um, if you're looking for a life group, a bunch of people, people that you can be abiding with, then they can help you out at Next Steps. And like I said, if you're looking for a life partner that's beyond their remit, they can't do that, but they will agree with you in prayer. So come on, church. Let's praise Jesus. Wow, what an incredible message. And we hope and pray that that really spoke to you today. Yeah, if you responded to Jesus today or there was something in the message that you would love to chat through with someone, why don't you reach out by the QR code right now and our team would love to get in touch with you this week and help you with your journey in following Jesus. But have a great week and we'll see you next time.